Hey guys, welcome to Transmit the 1075 in case you missed it. Today I want to go over the most underutilized tool in the fire service, um, and that is the deck gun. I'm going to show you two videos here first before we get into the details of this incident. Uh, this was not this department's finest hour, I can tell you that, and we'll go through it piece by piece here. But again, I'm going to show you these two videos. One is the time at which it takes to deploy a deck gun, and two is the uh, capabilities that it has. Um, so in my view, this is a perfect scenario for using this. Um, I think there's many that it's always overlooked for reasons I don't quite understand. I will say to my credit, pat myself on the back, I've used it myself three or four times in my career uh, while I was the uh, chauffeur. Anyway, um, this is a cul-de-sac and there's a hydrant right here. So again, perfect scenario. You have a water supply and uh, access to the front of the building with the first due engine with four guys on it. In this video, Training Services has provided a side-by-side -side comparison of utilizing a deck gun versus deploying a hand line. As you can see, the deck gun with a one and a half inch stack tip will deliver 300 GPM faster than the inch and three quarter hand line at 150 GPM. Twice the amount of water in less than half the time. Using the deck gun in this manner is not meant to be a long-term operation. It is a way to deliver a large amount of water in a short period of time to knock down the fire while hand lines are placed in service. Inside the home at this time, uh, what we can tell you is that uh, crews are just now getting uh, water turned uh, onto the, uh, the blaze. Uh, and uh, we will have more information for you as it becomes available here uh, on uh, WXRO later in the afternoon. Thanks. All right, guys, now that we've listened to those two videos and we know what the capability is of a deck gun and also what the timing is, let's review this incident and see how things play out. That is fully involved. Yes. Oh my goodness. Now here comes the first new engine. Let's just pause it for a Come second. On, guys. Right here, we know that this apparatus has a deck gun. So the capability is here. Thank God for 911. All right, let's also make note. I've just heard the air brakes uh, uh, set, the parking brakes set on the, uh, on the engine. It is at five minutes, 10 seconds. Let's go over here, Mom. All right, at five minutes and 28 seconds, so um, 18 seconds? It's taken 18 seconds for the chauffeur to get out of the apparatus. I'm not sure why it's taken that long, uh, but it's sort of indicative of how things are gonna play out here. And you can also see here, uh, one of the guys in the back uh, is starting to pull off a two and a half that's pre-connected to the rear. All right, here is what I believe is the officer. Now, there is a chief on scene here, so I'm, I'm not sure what the officer is doing, why he isn't assisting in the, in the stretch here. Uh, we want You want to get this line deployed as quick as humanly possible. Um, I'll also make note that the chauffeur, um, again, I've been a chauffeur many a day, 
and during a working fire of this magnitude and you have an exposure and the potential for this to get into the woods and this is in a rural area where it could turn into a wildfire um, his first instinct after taking some time just to get out of the apparatus is his first worry is setting the chocks now look I know guys from here will probably say, oh, that's what you should do. I have to admit, in 32 years in the fire service, I think I've seen chocks deployed maybe twice, and that's riding with FDNY, riding with Philly Rescue One. Uh, I work for two different departments. I've been on hundreds of calls, uh, both as a firefighter and as a buff. You, this isn't something you see regularly, and why at a major incident are you not, as a chauffeur, in my view, your primary role is to get the pump in gear, make sure it's working, assist in the stretching of the first line, and get the line charged as soon as humanly possible. I don't see any of that in this incident. All right, so as I said, this is a pre-connected line. I'm pretty sure it's a two and a half. Uh, it's connected right here to the rear. They're getting a lot of hose off here. Again, I won't nitpick too much. I might consider, I, maybe it's 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 uh, packed like this, so you have to take the shoulder line off, but it seems to me they're pulling a lot more hose than they're gonna need. They probably need 50 or 100 feet of hose here, and they, they have significantly more. But regardless of that, where, where are the guys helping getting this uh, stretched properly? There's, you know, there's three, there's three additional guys other than the chauffeur on this engine. All right, I'll pause again. Uh, here's your chief here. So the, thankfully for this officer being first due, I, I'm familiar with being understaffed and being the only company at times. Fortunately for them, they have a hydrant close, like I've mentioned, and a chief. So the, the officer of this apparatus has nothing to worry about other, as far as incident command other than assisting his crew on getting the first hand line stretched in uh, or a deck gun as I would have suggested uh, at this fire and meanwhile here's another odd thing the chauffeur has now got to put his air pack on so again instead of doing his job in assisting in the stretch getting a, a water supply uh, <laughs> making sure the pump is actually going to work He's worried about the uh, chalk as well as um, putting his air pack on. Uh, very unusual to me. You guys, please, if I'm missing something here, guys, please comment and put me uh, straight here. All right, so now he's going to help get the rest of the uh, pre-connected line. Obviously, you don't want it charged in the bed. Another firefighter now. Again, we, we don't have a line in service, and we're now worrying about stretching a supply line, which, grant you, I think is very, very important. But putting the initial um, line in service takes priority. Once the line is in service, then worry about supply. So we still have no water on the fire. The line is just being charged. Let me just bring this back here. My apologies. So starting to see the line get charged. Here we go, right? So this is at six minutes, six minutes 45. So I think we're at 5.10. So it's been, you know, you do the math, and so if, as we said before, the deck gun uh, could be deployed in 24 seconds, and that hand line in LA was deployed in one minute. So again, I don't want to keep bad mouthing or harping on these guys, but now we have four firefighters, okay? Four firefighters that can be, actually three if we discount the chauffeur. We have three firefighters. We're now stretching a second line. So. Is the two and a half now being operated by one person? I would argue a two and a half should have at least two guys. Once it's filled with water to move it around um, is damn near impossible. It's very, very heavy. So we have three firefighters 
And at this point, two hand lines stretched. And to this point, I don't see any change in the fire whatsoever uh, for whatever this line is currently starting to do. All right, here's this the is my mom's house. Right here. This is the guy's mom's house, in case you're wondering. All right, supply line is being stretched. Don't you need a length or two? By the way, the chauffeur has dropped his air pack. You know, I don't see any steam coming up. I don't, I, I, you know, occasionally, I think once I've watched this video a few times, you'll see a couple uh, uh, times you'll see the line. Yep, there we go. Right? But again, he may be knocking down a little bit of fire on the side of the house, but I don't see any change in the course of the, this fire, the direction that it's going in. I just saw the black smoke and uh, something either in the garage or in that tent trailer right there was on fire and it just caught I mean, there's only a couple guys here at this fire. I would, I'm just surprised with the lack of uh, concern or, or hop in your step. So as of right now, you have two members of a four-man team fighting this fire. Looks like they're getting the fire out on that. All right, my suggestion. I'm. I'll let this. You know, go back to the original view. Of, uh, this fire here. It's entitled House Fire in Rogue River, Oregon. Um, guys, in my view, the engine pulls up, dumps the the deck gun. You, as that video previously shows, uh, you can do this in 24 seconds uh, with with one guy. Um, knock the bulk of this fire down, if not most of it. Um, knock, hit the exposure, hit whatever fire here is closest to it. And then immediately, uh, one guy is doing this. The other two could stretch the uh, supply line. Now you have a water supply. You could. I am sh quite certain that almost this entire fire at this position could be knocked out. Then, once things have slowed down and the fire is... is um, not making any headway, then step stretch an inch and three quarter line and mop up whatever you have to do or go to the rear and take care of any potential wild and fire issues that you might have. But anyway, this happens in America in uh, every single day. Um, the deck gun, in my view, is almost never used when it could be extremely effective. So anyway, I sort of ranted and raved here for a while. Please, as part of this channel, I want people to comment, give me your perspective, tell me what things are like. I'm from the Northeast, um, so you know different parts of the country are different of how they do things, what their concerns are, what their limitations are, what their manpower is, so on and so forth. But please, uh, add your comments and please uh, like and subscribe my channel and continue to follow if you look under um, transmit the 1075 in case you missed it i have a library there of other videos uh, please check them out thank you so much